Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and today is another installment of Superstar Spotlight. My guest at this time is the veteran himself, Jack Vaughn. Jack, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. This is wonderful. <laughs> I'm very happy to have you, sir. You have been actually a very uh, highly requested guest for this series. Oh, wonderful. A lot, a lot of people have been quite the fans of your TikTok videos. It's good to hear. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to uh, glad to hear that uh, it's it's getting out there. <laughs> All right, well, we'll uh, let's start here at the beginning, as all good stories should. How long have you been in the wrestling business, Jack, and who broke you in? So it's actually coming up on an anniversary. So March seventh will be 19 years since uh, the first day that I started training. And uh, the way it kind of started was, you know, like all people my age, I'm 37. So a lot of guys my age growing up in the, uh, the 2000s, we had a backyard wrestling fed. And uh, me and my friends, when, uh, when we graduated high school, all wanted to get into the business. And there was a gentleman at my gym who told me about an ad in the paper he saw for a training school run by Shark Boy. So we all signed up. And there was probably four of us, I think, that signed up in that class. And been ever since then so how many people were in your initial training class so ours was it was only 10 people so it wasn't really like a, a wrestling school it was like a training camp so the way it worked was it was like 15 weeks three times a week and then and it was actually really cool because on the last day what shark did was he had a few of the local area promoters and trainers come watch us put on like a mini show and that was sort of a, a way for us to network. So, and then we kind of decided, like, a few of us went some places, some of us, you know, some of the guys never wound up pursuing it any further. And then, you know, I wound up uh, going from there to wrestle with the Northern Wrestling Federation in Cincinnati, and I stayed there for a little while. Let's say, I've seen you pop up at, at several independent shows throughout uh, the Midwest here. What ones are you currently working the most? Uh, the ones that you that people can probably see me on the most, uh, I am currently working with Ohio Valley Wrestling down in Louisville. Um, most Friday nights, there is a promotion local to me called Future Great Wrestling in Hamilton, Ohio. And then uh, I guess one of the other notable ones is War Wrestling up in Lima, Ohio. They're uh, once a month. I'd say those are both incredible uh, companies to work for. I've, I've had the privilege to have a few of their uh, talent on the podcast before, and it's been a, it's an amazing experience to have them on. Um, in terms of, of your career, Jack, who would you say you've had the best match with and also who's had the best chemistry with you in the ring? I think my best matches, and it's, it's great because in the last year I've gotten to work with these guys quite a bit, are Jake Oman and Pompano Joe. Um, Jake Oman, um, for people that aren't familiar, he's a good friend of mine. He, um, has wrestled all over the world. You know, he's been Europe. He was, he spent some time in Japan. He's had a couple tryouts with the WWE. Um, and then Papa Joe's more of a local guy, but he's a guy that I've known since I first started. And, uh, every, every, I feel like every time that I get into the ring with, with Joe, I always feel like, man, that was like my, one of my best matches ever. It's because Joe is, is, he's so, like highly underrated. Um, and unfortunately, he just never, I don't know if he just didn't try much or, or what the deal was, but Joe is, is one of those guys that, like, the, the guy just doesn't put on a bad match. Hey, those are always the type of people you want to have matches with, though. Yeah. Um, so over the course of your career, you have had a, probably an uncountable amount of matches to your name. What would you say is the best story you have seen told in a wrestling ring not necessarily the best match, but the psychology behind what was being told in the ring. Are you, are you uh, in regards to something that I've done? Uh, th that you've done or, or somebody that uh, you've seen do it. Okay. So the one that really stands out for me was actually just one that happened earlier this year uh, up at war. I had, I did uh, a program with Cody Jones, who I believe is from Chicago. Um, we did an angle where, you know, just with my gimmick being the old school guy, 
Um, he is a, Cody's actually a, a second generation wrestler. His father was a wrestler back in the day, and uh, Cody's been around you know longer than I have. And the way that we kind of frameworked it was, I offered him basically uh, an opportunity to join my group, and he declined it. And I basically took it from the perspective of your dad would have wanted you to be with this group to honor you know the old school philosophy and you know unfortunately you know uh, Cody's dad is no longer with us so um, we played it up like you know your dad would be ashamed of you uh, and then his uh, his wife is Paloma Starr who is another uh, fantastic wrestler and uh, you know we worked her into the program uh, did a deal where like we we uh, handcuffed Cody to the ropes and I wound up giving her like a big lariat um, and then, yeah, it, it, it all culminated in a, a dog collar match at the anniversary show, at the war's last anniversary show this past May. And that was probably my favorite angle I've ever been. Like, I, I, had, uh, I had some people tell the, uh, the owner of war that what I did was absolutely disgraceful. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want. It's always good to that, get that type of I reaction. I trying. That's how I know I did something good as a bad guy. So... When it when it comes to the fans, what would you say is the best interaction you've had with a fan and the worst? So I've had a lot of negative interactions just through social media over the last maybe six months since the the, the TikTok and, and that sort of thing has has taken off. Um, I mean, a lot of it is is a lot of the same stuff. It's it's fans trying you know telling me that I'm just an old bitter man that never made it and you know I'm I'm you know. I'm a hack, and I'm just, you know, upset that, you know, the guy, the, the indie guys are better than me and that sort of stuff, so, but, like, I've never really had a fan, um, try to, like, attack me or anything, um, but, no, I have a lot of really good interactions with fans, there's a lot of people that really appreciate, um, the gimmick and appreciate what I'm doing, uh, in terms of just being, like, an old school guy, so, I get a lot of, like, older gentlemen that were, you know, fans of wrestling back in the day, they're like, man, you just you remind me of the stuff I loved growing up. But I'm like, that's that's kind of what the the point of the gimmick is. So. So when it comes to the, the the old school mentality and the aura to the character, is that what led to the the TikToks? Because guys, if you haven't seen it, you need to check out Jack Vaughn's TikTok. It has got some incredible stuff on it. So, well, thank you. Um, so honestly, when I first, because you know, obviously I haven't been the veteran since I first started, but. Um, when I first came up with the character, I was actually really against social media uh, because that, in my mind, that didn't fit the gimmick. And, you know, I was really hesitant to even get, like, a Twitter account. Um, but eventually I did, and what happened was I had attended a seminar being run by a wrestler by the name of Brutal Bob Evans. Um, for anyone that doesn't know Bob, he's been around a long time. He's had, you know, he's basically worked for every major company that's that's ever been in the last 30 years. And, uh, you know, I've known Bob a long time, and he's told me he really liked the way that I did my social media, and this is before I was doing videos, and he just told me, like, you need to get on TikTok, and you need to do more video content, because I think you could really benefit from that. Um, and, like, honestly, I, I was kind of resistant. Like, I really didn't want to start a TikTok. And he convinced me to do it, so I filmed a couple things, and... My first video, I, I posted it at, like, midnight, which is a terrible time to post a video. Uh, but I was just trying to kind of get used to using the platform. And, you know, like, I went to bed, and when I woke up, it had, like, 5,000 views. And I'm like, oh, that's that's not bad. Like, that's, you know, con considering the videos that I had posted before, like, match clips, they get, like, a few hundred. I'm like, oh, 5,000, that's really good. Didn't think anything of it, and then within 24 hours, it had almost 100,000 views. Yeah. So, oh, shit. Yeah, and then uh, I posted another video the next day, and it did just as well. So, and you know, ever since then, like videos have kind of like you know, some are better, you know, get more views than others. But it's it's been a pretty consistent thing for me since I first started. I, mean, I gotta say, they're highly entertaining. I, I have Thank you. <laughs> watched several. You're most welcome, and it, it just the the way it's delivered. It's so well done, and you've had multiple people in there with you. Uh, Aaron Williams, I believe, was mm -hmm. was one of them. Uh, a couple different refs. I wasn't. I just seen the referee one recently. Yeah. Um. 
so did you get any backlash from any of the other workers throughout the scene? Like, you don't have to, please don't name names if you don't want to. Yeah. Um, but was there any, like, pushback from you? Yes. So early on, um, I, you know, I didn't see a lot of it. I was told that there was a lot of it. Um, I did see where someone had shared one of my posts, a, a fairly well-known independent guy, and then uh, I just looked at the comments, and it was like a lot of, sim not like super big names, but like people that you might recognize if you follow indie wrestling, and they were all just like, who's this guy, who's he ever beat, you know, this guy's a joke, that sort of thing. And I think what the problem was is I don't think that at the time they understood that it was part of the veteran character. I think they thought it was just some, you know, some old guy that, you know, was, you know, going back to, like, people saying that I'm, like, old and bitter, I think they probably felt the same way. You know, it's just some old guy that they had probably never heard of talking about how, you know, current wrestling is bad and old, older wrestling is good. Uh, but for the most part, that seems to have died down. I feel like for the most part, uh, the boys are kind of in on it. And I still get some, some backlash from fans, but that's what I want. Yeah, and, and watching these videos, I do want to make mention, I, I don't feel that you come off as being malicious or with ill intent. Like, it's for entertainment purposes, and it ties into the character. Yeah, I th but I think it's it's all about, like, you know, I think about, you know, me as a fan of certain things. Like, I'm a big heavy metal fan. I'm a big fan of, I'm from Cincinnati, so I love the Reds and the Bengals. And even though, like, the Reds are terrible, like, I can say that they're terrible, but if you're not a Reds fan, you can't tell me that the Reds are bad because that's my team, you know. So like, it, I think it just comes down to like when you tell someone who is a fan of the, you know, the the indie riffic style of wrestling, they take it personally and they feel like they've been attacked, and that's when they feel like they need to try to defend it. Um, but my, you know, like I don't really, um, I was just trying to poke fun at it. Like I, I don't, you know, I've never named an individual, I've never named a company in any of my videos. Because I'm just trying to... It's satire. And I think a lot of people just kind of don't understand satire anymore. I would... I, I could agree with that. Um, going back into your career, Jack, what would you say is one lesson that you learned throughout your time in professional wrestling that you didn't expect to learn? And how did it affect your career after you learned it? So I would say just in the last couple of years since I started doing The Veteran... I, I finally understood the difference between working and wrestling. Uh, I know, and I tell this to young guys a lot, when I first started, uh, you know, because I'm a big guy, I'm 6'6", and I'm like 250 right now. When I first started, I was probably 275. And I was told by a lot of the people that I was working for, you don't need to bump. We are building you as a monster. You don't need to go out there and do all this stuff. But in my head, I was like, well, I want to go out there and show everyone that I know how to wrestle. You know, I want to show everyone that I can do the cool stuff and that I'm athletic and that sort of thing. And I tell the young guys now, like, guys, you don't need to worry about getting moves over. Get your character over. Get your, your gimmick over. And, like, the cool moves are fine if you work them the right way. Um, but that's really the thing that I've really uh, learned the most over the last couple of years is just being able to work rather than wrestle. And I think that's something that people need to really try to understand. Uh, that's an incredible lesson for really anybody of any skill level to learn. And it's it's so weird because when, when you talk to some wrestlers, and it could be people that have been in the business maybe a month, four, four or five months, and they think they know everything. You, you never stop learning, not just in life, but in pro, uh, professional wrestling as well. It's such a learning experience, and it, and it changes every day, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And... Out of curiosity, over the course of your career into present date, what would you say is your favorite style to wrestle? Hmm. You know, it's it's funny because I actually really enjoy the big guy little guy dynamic. I love when I get into the ring with a, a small guy who's quick and agile and high flying because that gives me an opportunity to, you know. As much as I love to like slow things down and have like a psychology and a story-based match, which I still do even in situations like that, but that gives me an opportunity to like show some more power moves. It gives me an opportunity to work differently than what you would see if I was just wrestling like a guy who's 
you know, 5'10 to 6'2. It's, I, I really like the, the creativity that I can use in matches with guys that are smaller. It's a very, very good analysis of that. If you were to have a booker on the fence about booking you for a show, what would you say is one trait that you have that would be just unmatched by anybody else that they could book that would give you the reason to be booked? So I would tell them two things. First of all, wrestling today is a social media driven business. And I, I mean, granted, you know, this is a recent thing for me, but I would tell them like, look, if you're on the fence about booking me, I got 30,000 people that are following me that'll see the flyer that I'm on. So there's that. But also, I feel like I am... I, I feel like I'm good at what I do, and I feel like I'm good at drawing heat. So I would, you know, I would really put myself over as being like, hey, like, I know that if given the, the right opportunity, I can be your number one heel. Like, I have no doubt about that. Just give, give me a mic, let me cut a, a promo on the way to the ring, and I, I will get heat. You don't have to worry about that. Say like when it comes to to professional wrestling, there's there's so many characters nowadays that you you look at and they, they all look the same. That is one of the nice things, the refreshing things about what you have going on with your character. You do stand out to to all the other characters. When you see the Jack Vaughn character, you're seeing something different. I feel. Yeah, I think, and I think that's one of the, the things I have going for me. Like, num number one, not only do I stand out just for being a big guy, uh, but I do, I, I've, I've crafted the gimmick in such a way to, I, like, I want to look like an old school wrestler. Like, that's, I, I don't have this facial hair because I want it. I, I have it because it, it fits the gimmick. Uh, I mean, I guess it doesn't look bad. My wife kind of likes it now. But, um, but like, you know, I have, like, the, the, the skull and crossbone glasses, you know, and I have the old school, like, Bob Backlund, like, varsity jacket, stuff like that, stuff, you know, so everything that I've done has, has, has really, tr uh, I've crafted it to make it seem like a wrestler that you don't see anymore, like, and like a wrestler that, like, your, your dad would have liked growing up, or that would have hated growing up, so, you know, that, that's really the way that I've, I've kind of crafted it. And again, I, I think you've done a, a fantastic job in doing so, <clears throat> Like I said, it's an incredible look for you, and it does help put you head and shoulders above a lot of other people out there. I feel. Thank you. Yeah, and then you know, and then like you know, I guess as much as I hate the fact that I'm kind of losing my hair, uh, it like that also fits the gimmick. Like I'm an older guy, um, you know. I, I wear trunks, uh, you know, and not there's not guys that wear that don't wear trunks, but like. You know, I specifically don't, you know, guys will, like, shave their legs when they wear trunks. I don't do that, because guys didn't do that back in the day. Some people find that a little weird, but I just, like, also shaving legs is such a hassle. <laughs> and I have no, I used to do, I did it for a while, and I, I have no interest in doing it ever again. I remember, Billy Rock had told me one time, he would only shave sections of his legs. Mm -hmm. The only, the, the parts that, that weren't covered up by the kick pads or the trunks... He said, that's what I shaved. Everything else stayed as God gave me. That, you know, that's not a bad idea, because I guess really it's only my thighs that are, that, are, that are exposed, so maybe I should just do the thighs. Let's say Billy's got a million and one hacks when it comes to life and professional good advice. I, I love Billy. I haven't seen him in so long, and I, honestly, now that I see that he's starting to wrestle a bit more, like I would love an opportunity, because I never got a chance to work with him, so I would love a chance to get in the ring with Billy. Billy is one of the absolute best people you could ever have a match with. And Absolutely. he is so, he sees everything. I, I've always said it, it's kind of like the guy that sat at the table for the hangover and everything's like slowly coming to him and he's adding everything up. That's Billy when it comes to putting a match together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And like he was one of the guys that um, when I was first starting out, I kind of knew about. And I was I would watch a lot of his stuff, and like even back then he was he was incredibly talented. I mean, it didn't change. <laughs> he looks like yeah. a fine wine, Billy Rock. Yep. Um, what would you say, Jack? In in your opinion, is one of the most overlooked traits to finding success in professional wrestling? Hmm. 
I mean, I feel like I've kind of touched on it a little bit, but like, you know, like I said earlier, wrestling is a social media business. And I've, the reason I, that, you know, honestly, probably the reason that you even know who I am is because of social media. And I, I found a way, I found a niche and I found, you know, I found my way. Um, so I, I think, but you know, like you, you see certain guys on social media, it's like, okay, well, they're going to post match clips. They're going to post, you know, um, you know, some, some good pictures and stuff like that. But like, for the most part, it's just like, oh, it's just another wrestler. Um, so I think like, Using social media to your advantage is is something that going forward more guys need to understand. Like it's it's more than just posting posting match clips and promos and stuff like that. You got to find something that people can latch on to. I think we might have lost Jack here on the on the episode. We're trying to get him back on here, guys. Now I think we're having technical difficulties. Oh, oh there, there we go. You're back. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Uh, are you still with me here, Jack? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, okay. Um, well, before we go ahead and wrap everything up, Jack, what are some stuff that you need the fans to know about you? Where can they find you? Uh, promoters looking to book you. Where can they find Jack Vaughn? Yeah, so uh, on... Pretty much all the social medias, uh, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, uh, you can find me at Vet Jack Vaughn. And then Facebook, you can just find Jack Vaughn. The, the picture is, I should be one of the first ones that pops up, I assume. Uh, it's just a picture of me in my black ring jacket. Uh, as far as like notable shows we have coming up, I am going to be at the Squared Circle Expo uh, in Indianapolis on uh, April 7th and 8th. It's Easter weekend. Um, and you know, and then you can find me on uh, OVW TV most most weeks on Fight TV. Excellent. Also on TikTok. Also on did I not say TikTok? Tic I don't think TikTok, you did. Instagram, and Twitter. Vet Jack Vaughn. Excellent. Well, uh, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast Superstar Spotlight Series. I again want to thank my guest Jack Vaughn for taking time from his day to join us. Uh, means a great deal, Jack. And guys. We will see you on the next episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Hopefully everybody takes care out there.